Have you ever felt that you're all over the place in your thinking? Have you ever thought you're all over the place in your life? Things are going here, going there. You don't know if you're coming or going, okay? It's like... Basically, coming from an unstable environment, an unstable platform uh, that you were, you were raised in. Um, I like to say it this way, if we were to sum all that up, um, it comes down to an undisciplined lifestyle or an undisciplined family of origin. You know, many families don't have the discipline that is necessary for us as children to, to have grown up and have a solid foundation that we can live our life on. Okay. Again, once again, there was, there could have been unreliability, undependability, unpredictability, just that instability of the home that is an undisciplined home. So, um, let's talk about that and let's get a little bit better understanding about well, what we're talking about relative to this undisciplined lifestyle or family of origin. So let's say, for example, you, when you grew up, you grew up in a family of origin and there were a lot of broken promises. Okay. This is a, a sign of, uh, uh undependability. Okay. Un, uh, broken promises. Yep. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Um, and then you didn't go. Okay. So if you find yourself as an adult that you get a little bit nervous, apprehensive into a place of anxiety, or you really don't believe when somebody says, Hey, let's, let's go out to dinner or let's do this. Let's, let's do that. If you've had a lot of broken promises in your life that creates, uh, in you, this, this, undisciplined life you're going to you're not going to be disciplined where you can take somebody at their word and say well if you said we're going to go do this then i believe we're going to go and do that but if you had broken promises you've been conditioned to not believe that um if you came from a family of origin where there was no vacations i mean these are small things but all this stuff adds up let's say in your family of origin you never went on vacations you never went anywhere okay you just stayed home hung around the neighborhood, <clears throat> what have you, um, no vacations. Um, that, that is, that, that can cause some dysfunction in your life as an adult lack. Okay. Um, will we eat today? Is there going to be food on the table? Will the lights be turned off? If you grew up in that type of environment, that unreliable or unpredictable, unstable environment that usually leads to some area of dysfunction in your life. And I'm going to say that it's most likely going to reveal itself in your life being somewhat undisciplined, at least in certain areas. Okay. Um, I remember growing up and we were, we were told that we were going usually around Christmas. Um, we were going to go to someone's house and do something, wrap presents. It's always, I think on Christmas Eve, we would do this. And, uh, my mom would, you know, change her mind. She would, she would flip on us. She would say she was sick. She didn't feel good. She didn't want to go and all this other stuff. One year we'd go, you know, we'd get all this expectation that we're going and then boop, we ended up not going. Okay. So we're going, we're not going again, unstable, unreliable. Um, maybe in some families, uh, you've had, uh, you know, there was husband and wife, you know, didn't work out. There was a divorce, maybe mom or dad, starts bringing in uh, other people to live in the home. That's, that's another thing to be perfectly honest with you, having a ton of people moving in and out of the home. Okay. People, family members, non-family members, friends, um, church members, uh, boyfriends, girlfriends, you know, multiple lovers, all this stuff going on. That's instability. Okay. Uh, that creates, uh, for us, the potential to have dysfunction in undisciplined, undisciplined lifestyle, um, chronic moving. Okay. Uh, families that move, you know, and again, you're a child and you're moving from one house to the next house, this neighborhood, that neighborhood, you're never really able to plant. You know, one of the things about children, we were all children at some point, obviously we need, we need structure. 
Children do not do well in unstructured or undisciplined, unstable environments. There needs to be a level of stability so that they can plant their feet and know that they can they can launch from this area. If they don't know where they're going, where they're where they're where they're coming from, are the light our lights going to be on? Are we going to eat today? Are we going to the Christmas party? Not? Are we going on vacation? You know, you you, you said you were going to show up, you didn't. All of that is instability. Now I want to look at some scripture here, um, just to kind of talk to you about this instability, this dysfunction, and the undisciplined lifestyle. Go to Genesis chapter 49 and look at verse number four, okay? Unstable, instability, okay? So in Genesis chapter 49 and verse number four, um, this is talking about Reuben. Now Reuben, Reuben uh, was uh, one of Jacob's sons, okay? I believe Reuben was the oldest son. And it says here uh, in verse number four of Genesis 49, unstable as water, you, talking about Reuben, shall not excel because you went up to your father's bed. Then you defiled it. He went up to my couch, okay? So we, okay, so, so Reuben went into his father's bed. He defiled that bed, okay? Um, and, 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 and he's referred to as unstable, just like water, okay? In the International Standard Version, it says, but you are undisciplined as a roaring river. So eventually you will not succeed. I really like this rendition of it. So eventually you won't succeed because you got into your to father's bed, you defiled it, and then approached my couch. So Reuben was out of order here. He was undisciplined. And in the word of God, it's referred to an undisciplined lifestyle as unstable, just like water. You're unstable. If you're undisciplined, you're unstable. You're just like water. In this case, in the ISV, it says, as a roaring river. Now, if you've ever seen the Mississippi, um, recently here in Arizona, we had, it's, it's monsoon season here, so we have uh, a lot of rain that comes through and it just comes down our streets um, because the ground is, obviously, it's so dry that it just floods. And if I was to take you outside, you would see all this rock all over the street because it just comes through everything. It roars like a river. Okay, and it goes, it goes everywhere, all right? This is what an undisciplined uh, lifestyle is like. Undisciplined lifestyles, if you find yourself, you know, struggle with discipline, self-discipline, then that's because, again, you most likely had a family that, we're not saying it was a bad family, it's not about bad here, it's about what, what happened. And again, parents usually give us what they got, okay? And they, you can't do better if you don't know better. But there was unreliability. You grew up in that un in the environment of unreliability, undependability, unpredictability, and just that unstable platform. Okay. Now, relative to being unstable, in James chapter one and verse number six through eight. Okay, make a note of that. Okay, James chapter one, verse number six and eight. We many of us are familiar with the scripture. It says, "But let him ask in faith." Talking about faith. Okay. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven, driven uh, and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So what we have to understand is that when we link James chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 49, you find out that when we are double-minded, when we have a split mind, that, that word double-minded is split mind, okay? And it's the, 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 the Greek word schizo in friend. Schizo, f split, friend, mind, okay? Double-minded. That's not talking about changing your mind. I want a blue car. No, I want a red car. That's not what it's talking about. What it's talking about is we're in faith and we don't believe. We believe we don't believe, okay? Uh, I trust God. I don't trust God. 
Uh, I, I, you know, we're, we're double minded. We're all over the place. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to start a business. I'm not going to start a business. We're, we're like, we're just like the wave, the wind blows. We just go wherever. Okay. That's an undisciplined life. Um, I want to go to school. I don't want to school. I'm going to start school. I'm not going to start school. I want to go do this career. I don't want to do this career. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start investing in stock market. I'm not going to invest in stock market. Why? Because the conditions and all this other stuff, we're split mind. Okay. And it says that that person is unstable. Reuben in being unstable was like water. He was very, he's, 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 the, the image is given is that he was unstable just like water. Okay. Um, and, and, and when he's speaking about Reuben, you know, remember Reuben was the oldest, I believe he was the oldest, oldest son. So that means he should have carried out the legacy of his father, Jacob. But why is the term water used? Okay. I mean, as it pertains to Reuben, because, because water is, again, it goes everywhere. Okay. So Reuben's rebuked here. Someone who is split mind, someone who is double minded, somebody who is unstable is rebuked. Okay. In the word of God here, the Lord is, is rebuking Reuben. He's criticized for thinking and acting uncontrollably. Reuben had no, no, no control. He goes into, he lays, he lays and, and, and defiles, meaning he had sex in his father's bedroom. Okay. An uncontrolled, no, no discipline. He lacked proper structure within his own life. So Jacob, okay. in in the spirit of the Lord here, uses the term water, okay, because water is very unstable. It's kind of like we would say today, well, you know, my son, he's, he's, uh, he's as stubborn as a mule, okay? That's what it is. Reuben, you're unstable just like water. You have no self-control. You don't think you're out of control. You just go every which where and ways you want to go. Yes, water takes on many, many forms, okay? And what we have to understand is, you know, what form are we to take on? Well, there's only one pattern, one form is that that is based on the, the, the form that God created us. God created us. He formed us. He did. He does not the word of God say, I formed you in your mother's womb. So God knows what we are, who we are, what we should be. It's when we are all over the place trying to come up with something, some narrative for us. That is not what God's word says. And that is double mindedness. And that is instability or being unstable in all our ways. And when we do this, we're not going to excel. People that do not excel in life, it's because they are unstable. Okay. Unstable, dysfunctional. Okay. And they've opened their whole world up to demonic spirits. They're going to have them just like with Reuben all over the place. Okay. So, so there's no structure. There's no lack in Reuben's life. Okay. The nature of water is this, unless that water is contained. So again, we have, we have a lake here that water is contained. There's, it, you know, there's, there's a, a riprap and there's, there's boulders. There's, there's, there's basically acreage of land that keeps that water restricted. Now, can it flood? Can it overflow? There's always the potential for that. Okay. Um, but unless water is contained, unless it's restricted, it's going to go everywhere, right? Water even goes into places. Watch this now. Water, again, water, Reuben, you're unstable, just like water. A double-minded man is unstable. So a double-minded man or woman, okay? is like Reuben. Your mind is uncontrolled. Your mind is undisciplined. We like, we would say this way, you're all over the place. Have you ever felt that you're all over the place in your thinking? Have you ever thought you're all over the place in your life? Things are going here, going there. You don't know if you're coming or going. Okay. It's like water, the nature of water, unless it's restricted or contained, it's going to go everywhere and it's even going to go into places that you don't want it to go in. I, I'm in a house. 
I have pipes. There's water in the pipes. The water is contained in those pipes. I want the water in those pipes. When I need water, I turn something called a faucet. It allows the amount of water and the temperature, even the temperature of water, to go into a bowl, which we call a sink, okay, or a bucket, wherever you're putting in, bathtub, and it's doing what I want it to do. That water is contained. And, and if you look at it, it's like a, a, a disciplined lifestyle. I, I, you know, I didn't build a house from the ground up. It was built when I bought it. But, you know, if I did, I would have said, we want pipes. We want sinks. We want a bathtub. We want this that, and the other. Why? Because we want to contain, we want to be disciplined to where we just don't have a big flood of water coming in the house. Okay. So water can go everywhere and it gets into places that it doesn't belong. For example, if one of those pipes begins to drip, okay? Some of you, if you've had, if you ever, if you're a homeowner um, or, or you've been responsible for the place that you've lived in um, and, and a drain or a pipe or something dripped underneath the sink and you don't take care of it, that is going to get onto the wood, okay? And it's eventually gonna cause rot into that wood if you don't address it virtually immediately. So a, a, a dripped pipe, a broken pipe is going to release water that could get into even under things like uh, wood floors, okay? Uh, roofing, if you have tiles and tiles get loose or you don't, you know, take care of your roof, um, water can come in and get under the shingles and that can cause your roof to leak. And if you don't address it, then your the wood, the, the, the plywood is going to begin to rot. See the danger? Okay, um, if it gets if water gets under the tile, it can loosen the glue and it can loosen the the grout, and your your tiles can begin to come loose and become unstable. Okay, why? Because the water is going everywhere. Okay, carpet. Um, if you ever had any flooding in your home, you'll understand this. We've had years ago. We used to have a sump pump back in Illinois when it rained like crazy. The sump pump. Um, if, especially if the, the, if the uh, lights went out because, or the electricity went out because of, you know, power outage or whatever, and that sump pump stopped pumping, that water would just, I mean, our basement would just, that water would come in like crazy, okay? And, you know, we'd have to, if it got in carpet, you have to rip out the carpet, throw out the carpet, get rid of the carpet. If it got in the furnace, you may have to replace certain parts, whatever, electrical things, electrical outlets. Um, very dangerous, right? That water is unstable. It's going everywhere. It doesn't say, well, let me stop in this room. No, it goes underneath the stud. It goes into the next room. It goes everywhere, okay? If it gets on your furniture, you got to toss the furniture out or have it professionally addressed, okay? So when water creeps into areas of your property where it shouldn't be, there could be a lot of damage, okay? And it, mold is another thing, okay? Uh, if you, it, it, it can bring in... It can invite uh, insects and rats and other type of infestations. So discipline, okay, specifically self-discipline is when we regulate ourselves, all right? But if we didn't come from that environment, we have difficulty in this area. We have difficulty self with self-discipline, self-regulating. Remember, in the kingdom of God, always remember this, we are not to be controlled. God doesn't control us. We're not to be controlled by any other person, any other group, any other agency, party, whatever it may be. We are not designed by God to be controlled. We are to be self-controlled, but we cannot be self-controlled, and when we're not self-controlled, we're dysfunctional, okay? I'll say it again. When we do not exercise self-control or self-discipline or self-regulation, okay? When we don't actively engage our will to do the things that God says in his word to do, or the Holy Spirit has spoken to us to do, okay? When we don't have that determination, when we don't have that drive, it's usually become we did because we did not come from that type of environment. Our family of origin 
was dysfunctional in that area. Now you may have grew up, let's say you grew up in a military home. I've had a lot of people say this. Well, I, I came from a very disciplined home. My dad was very, very disciplined. My dad was a colonel in the army and, and he treated us like we were in boot camp and all this other stuff, whatever. Okay, I'm not talking about that, okay? You, that, that could cause its own set of problem, problems. I'm talking about discipline based on how God explains it in his word, okay? Stories like Reuben being taught as children that, you know what, when you're split mind, when your mind is not, is not controlled, your thoughts are not controlled by you based on the word of God, you're going to be split mind in areas, double minded. You're going to go in and out. You're going to be thinking based on the mind of the flesh. Then, then, you're, then it's going to be more spiritual. It's going to be spiritual and it's going to be the mind of the spirit or the mind of Christ. Double-minded. Okay? I love the Lord. Eh, I don't feel like it. The Lord, I don't love the Lord. The Lord loves me. Eh, I don't think the Lord loves me. Okay? I'm anointed. Uh, I'm not so anointed. I'm loved. Uh, I'm not so loved. That's split mind. You're unstable. You're like water. And that means you're going to go. It's going to go. That dysfunction is going to go everywhere within your life. It's not going to, because it, you, you, you're just, you, you haven't harnessed it. You haven't controlled it. It's out of control. Okay. Some of you, you have you ever felt your life is out of control? There you go. Okay. So we need to, 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 to understand this. Okay. Because if we don't have self-discipline, if we don't have self-regulation, if we don't understand willpower, okay, if we don't have that determination to do, how are you going to get yourself to do what needs to be done to move forward in your life? How? How are you going to do that? What are you going to do? You're going to, what, what, what Christians will usually do is pray and put it on God and say, God, you do this. You, you, you do this. I, my wife and I were talking recently and we hear people say in their prayers, well, Lord, renew my mind. Lord, renew my mind. So you're saying, I want, I want you to do all the work. I'm not going to do anything. See, this is why people, they like Christians. I should say, shouldn't say people. They, 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 they don't mind getting in a, a, a prayer line. They don't mind getting in a deliverance line. They don't mind having hands laid on them, falling out, coughing it up, throwing it up, and every demon in the, in the, in the, in, in the universe name to come out of you. They don't have a problem with that. But the moment you tell them that you, the person, you need to renew your mind, you want me to do that work? You want me to do that? And see, that in and of itself is, is instability because we weren't properly trained to know that, look, we have something that we have to do here. We have to, we renew our mind. We have to have, it's called self-discipline. Now, God raises us up as his children in a disciplined manner, okay? Discipleship is also about discipline. The Bible says the, the, the Lord loves whom he chastens, who he disciplines. Okay, that's not talking about beating down and criticizing and attacking. No, it's talking about discipline, teaching. Okay, we didn't get that from our, 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 our biological parents in most cases. We may have been taught here and there, but I'm not talking about here and there. I'm talking about lifestyle. Okay, so discipline is big. Discipline, if, if you have instability or you came from these areas I was talking about, unreliability, unpredictability, unstable, and undisciplined home, then discipline is she needs to be your focus, okay? There's a lot of words that start with D, discipline, disciple, okay, determination, definiteness, all these things. That D word discipline is something that you really, really need to focus in. Because, listen, I'll be honest with you, and if you're honest with yourself, you, I think you'll agree with me, that... Again, I'm just talking about Christians, belie believers. Most are undisciplined in their lifestyle. Okay, I remember years ago, um, we used to carpool in Chicago, and there was uh, a lady 
who uh, she, you know, very religious. Um, I, I won't mention the denomination that she came from, but um, you know, very religious. You know, uh, I, I believe it was like have to, you know, wear a skirt down to her her ankles and all this other stuff, and you know, uh, carried her Bible everywhere she went, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Very religious, and 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 in her speech, she it would come out, and it would come out, you know. Yeah, I can't go to the movie theater. I can't go roller skating. I can't do this. I can't because that's where the sinners are. Okay, I can't do that. But then we find out that, um, you know, and one of our friends actually kind of hooked up with her and went to go visit her and she went like totally crazy on him. Like, like, like she just jumped on him and started slobbering all over him and, you know, totally out of control. Okay. Because religion is not a disciplined lifestyle, okay? Religion, and remember, there's a difference between discipline and being in, being in an environment where you learn how to discipline yourself versus being in an environment that looks to control you, okay? God doesn't control you. God disciplines you. Why? Because that's what you should learn. That's what you, again, that's what our parents should have done. My parents didn't teach me about discipline. Nobody ever sat down and talked to me about discipline. I heard the word, okay? I heard that I heard the word as I grew up, self-discipline, but nobody really sat me down and talked. Did they do to you? Did, who, who on here where somebody said, let me explain to you self-discipline. Let me explain to you how you self-regulate. I mean, did anybody ever tell you that every thought that comes in your mind, you need to address? Goodness. I never heard that. I never heard that in any church service ever. I never heard that. Every thought that it's my responsibility to bring that thought into the obedience of or into alignment or harmony into the frequency of God. I, I, and if it's not in that frequency, I need to do what? I need to bind it. I need to cast it out. I need to get, utterly destroy that thought and imagination. Whoever taught you that? And then we wonder why we're all over the place. We wonder why we're still unstable, like Reuben, as water. Just do everything and anything, okay? So discipline is very important for the believer, for everybody for that matter, but I'm speaking specifically to believers. Uh, Jim Rohn, uh, a, a, a famous author and uh, motivational speaker, said discipline is the bridge between goals an accomplishment. So we have all these goals, right? Oh, I want to achieve this. I want to do this. I want to do that. Well, we don't accomplish it because why? No discipline. Okay. Anybody can relate to this? All right. So what are some of the signs? What are some of the signs that we, we, we came from this unstable, unpredictable, okay, unreliable platform or family of origin where we, we brought in this dysfunction or we, we, we have this dysfunction put in us and we, we, we took it hook, line, and sinker and we, we, we have this undisciplined, unstable life. Well, think about some, some, some of the areas that you may struggle in, okay? Um, I know I can think of things in, in my life, okay? Um, if, if you've suffered from little to low or maybe even no achievement, in various areas of life, like, man, I really want to achieve this. I want to achieve that. I want to do this. I want to do that. Okay. That, that, that's because dysfunctional family of origin, unpredictability, unpredictability, unreliability, unstable platform, no discipline. You didn't know how to control you based on God's word and his Holy Spirit. You allowed everything and anything to just move within your mind. Your mind was everywhere, split, scattered, fragmented, emotions follow. And then you wonder why, come on. You, you've, you've probably been frustrated for years, perhaps decades, perhaps your entire life, where you know, how many of you have said, there's got to be something more. I know there's something more in me. I know I have something greater to do, but yet you struggle with ever achieving your full potential. Why? Because of what I'm talking about here today. It's dysfunction. Oh, I thought it was a demon. It is. 
but you, what you have done is you've allowed, the reason you're at the place you're at, even if there's demons involved, is because of your thinking, okay? Your thinking is the gateway, is the porthole of demonic spirits that lock you up. That's what demons do. They, they harass you, they bind you, they lock you up, and they ultimately torment you, okay? They lock you up. But the only way they can lock you up is your thinking, even if your thinking came from your family of origin, in other words, it was programmed in you, and your emotions, remember, every thought has an emotion. Every thought has an emotion. Write that down. Every thought has a corresponding emotion. So everything that has passed through the sense realm into your thinking, into your mind and brain, okay? Okay, two different things, but they work together. There's an attached emotion, okay? So later on in life, this is why later on in life, that if something crosses your path, somebody says something, does something, we call them triggers. That's because the stored thought with its attached emotion triggers, okay? So it's those thoughts that you weren't in an environment, you were not in a family of origin that showed you, explained, okay, uh, taught you to discipline your thinking. <laughs> Uh, the Lord, I, I, one morning I was sitting outside and going through just my, my, my reflection, time of reflection, meditation and praying. And the Lord, I, I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, tighten it up. Tight, tighten it up? You know what? Tighten up my belt? What, what am I tightening up? No, tighten up your thinking. Your, your, your thinking is, is getting loose. You understand what I mean? Loose, okay? It, it, it's, 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 again, water is, is if it's not contained... It just goes everywhere. Okay, you got a bottle of water. It's it's contained right now. I'm disciplining it. It stays in this thing when I want to drink it. Okay, I drink it. But if I put it here on the desk and I have I, I put the cap on it, but if I took the cap off, I've done this before, unfortunately. Um, and my arm hits it, that water is unstable. Okay. It's, it's, I can't say stay there. It's going to go everywhere. That's, you have to look at your thoughts like that. Your thoughts need to be controlled. Okay. So when we have no achievement in our life, we lack, again, again, I'm just giving you, I'm just giving you a, a, a few things. Yeah. Praise God, Sarah. Sarah says this is so good. Never heard any of this sitting in 37 years of church. Well, that's why we do what we do. It's the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God is about teaching about life. Jesus came to, the king came to give life and to give us as citizens of the kingdom, the abundant life. So um, think another thing. Okay, this was something uh, early on in my life uh, and probably still some residual stuff. I'm not nowhere near perfect. Um, inconsistency. Anybody struggle with inconsistency? That's a sign that you have a lifestyle that lacks discipline and you're unstable. Okay? Inconsistent. Inconsistency in your life. Okay? Up, down, hot, cold, all around. Remember, schizo friends, split mind. Okay? That's what the word means. Schizo means split. I'm split. Okay? I, 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 I'm unstable. A split mind is unstable. That's what the Word of God says. I didn't say it. The Word of God says that. So this is why our thinking. This is why I tell people, be careful how many voices you hear. You know, everybody's running around, this minister, that minister, this ministry, that ministry, here, there, everywhere, all over the place. Pop this in, pop that in. You get all these voices, somebody giving you this advice and all this other stuff, okay? You're all over the place. And you're inconsistent. Stick to something. Be consistent. I'm not saying have some variety. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying be consistent. Because, you, 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 again, the brain doesn't do well doing multiple things, right? Do something. Stick with it. Have that consistency. Have that, have that determination. Have that discipline to stay with something. And we've all struggled in this area. Whether it was a diet or whether it was working out or whether it was, you know, writing a book. Okay? 
or, or, or starting a business. We start something and we put it down. We get frustrated. We get tired. We get lazy. Okay. We're up and down. We're excited. We're not excited. Deal with your thoughts. I'm talking to somebody, including myself. Okay. Another sign of instability or an undisciplined mind is <laughs> uh, decision making. Okay. And I'm going to say it this way. Some people make no decisions. They just, they just, what's your decision? I haven't made one. Do you, are you going to make one? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. What? I mean, if there's anything that kind of gets me um, to give somebody the blank stare, it's when there's just no decision. What, what do you want? What do you want for dinner? I don't know. You don't know what you want for dinner? You have no idea what you want for dinner. I know I'm hungry. What do you want? I don't know. What do you want? I don't know. I mean, it, it, I've, I've seen people like this and it, 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 it's, 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 it's dysfunctional. No decision. Bad decisions. I mean, you're, it's blatantly obvious that if you eat fried chicken every night of the week, that you are making poor choices, you are making bad decisions. I, I was sharing this the other day with somebody. They were talking about in life transformation. They were talking about life. I said, life. I said, listen, let's not make this hard. I said, life is about you making choices, decisions. And you're always at a strategic point in life, okay? You're always at a crossroad throughout the day. You know, we, we're just not, we have to make, become consciously aware, guys, that this is how it works, okay? That you don't just wake up and say la vie and listen, whatever is gonna happen, happens. No, <laughs> you, 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 I, all of us have to wake up and immediately, from a conscious perspective, start to deal with the thoughts. So how many of you, I know I have, I'll talk about me, I'll be transparent because I know everybody I'm talking to, I know you, mo most of you don't have any problems, okay? But I know that there's times, I, even before I get out of the bed, okay, sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll start thinking about something and it's just not healthy, okay? And I start unraveling things and I got this image going. I'm like, I have to kind of shake and say, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's like this when you wake up in the morning. The first 20 minutes of you waking up in the morning, whatever you're thinking on is most likely going to guide you throughout the day. So if you think about all the problems you have, if you think about all the relational issues you have with your husband, your wife, or everything that's not happening in your life that you want to have, have happen, or again, all, all the financial problems or whatever it is, guess what? Nothing's ever gonna change. But if you are consciously aware and say, no, this is what I'm going to think. Going back to the, the picture of sometimes, you know, if I, if I get up and I, you know, I, you know, let's say I use the restroom in the middle of the night, go back to bed, I, you know, I lay in the bed and I start thinking about whatever. If I don't consciously say, change that picture, I don't want that story. I don't, I don't want that movie. Who Remember, the movie of your life, who controls the movie of your life? You think, you think demons do? You think the demons are controlling the picture in your mind? No, you are controlling the picture in your mind. However, if you continue with that, the demons are gonna come in and put you, they're gonna lock you up, meaning that it's gonna be so chronic with you that you're in bondage and it's a vicious spiral, it's a rabbit hole. How do I get out of this thing? And yes, you need to be delivered. But if you really want deliverance with, with, with the maintenance or the maintaining of that deliverance, you need not only the demon eradicated, you need the thought dealt with. Jesus said, okay, that when the demon goes out, it goes into dry places, but it says, I will go back to my house. What's its house? You, your, your soul mind, will, and emotions, not your spirit, your mind, will, emotional faculties, that, that area, okay, that, the, you, it says, I'll go back. And if it finds that there's no change, okay, but that it's garnished the same way it was garnished before, toxic, that's conducive with the demons, they come back. And the last state of the man is worse than first. Why is that? Because 
the, the, the longer it goes in the, 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 the more that you, 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 you have lack of discipline in your life, the worse it gets. You just spiral out of, it's called being out of control, unstable. Okay. Again, I live out here in, in the Southwest, the desert, when it rains up in the mountains, it can be pouring up there and be sunny over here. When it rains, if that water starts to come down, we have what's called washes, okay? Washes. Some of you that live out this way, you're familiar with washes. In the water, you'll see a little bit. It'll, it'll just come a little bit of a trickle. A little bit. And then all of a sudden, you see more coming. And next you know, you start hearing this thunderous roar, okay? Why? A little leaven leavens the whole lump. A little bit of undisciplined thinking over a period of time we're out of control. We're unstable. We're split. Okay. So again, we need to have, have make decisions, make good, healthy choices or decisions, and not. Here's another thing uh, that's dysfunctional and 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 based on a non-disciplined mind or an undisciplined mind. Delayed decision making. Delayed decision making. This one. I know it comes, especially when there's opportunity where you've been praying, you've been asking God, you've been seeking, you've been believing, you've walked by faith, not by sight, all this stuff. And all of a sudden the opportunity comes, but now rather than making the decision at that point, you start to overanalyze, psychoanalyze, and, 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 and it, it passes you by. It, it, it misses you. Okay. That's delayed decision making. So again, this is a major area that I could talk. I could probably talk a whole hour about decision making because here's the here's the reality of it is this. A lot of people think, well, I'm waiting on the Lord. No, time out. The Lord is really waiting on you. OK, he's 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 already done. He's done what he needs to do. The Lord has set everything up. Everything is done based on the kingdom of God. You have been given the keys of the kingdom. You have the word of God that gives you all the principles, laws, live the principles, live the laws, make your decisions based on that, not based on the, the sense realm, okay, or circumstances. Well, I, I want a house. I prayed for a house. I believe for a house. It's in my vision statement. However, I'm going to wait because why? Well, the, the interest rates have gone up. Or the housing market's doing this or the this is the That's how we think, right? I get it. That's how we think. I, I get it because that's how we've been conditioned. But look what you're doing. Are you not split mind? Okay. So if you want the house, make the decision to buy the house. Well, I can't buy the house. I don't have the money. The reason you don't have the money is because you haven't made a decision to buy the house. You don't need the money. Listen to me clearly. You don't need the money. What you need is the decision. Well, I need the money. No, you need a decision. The decision to buy the house <coughs> comes first. Then the money will come because God, our provider, okay, that's the, God's our source, provides. He is the God of abundance. You make the decision, I then it comes. law. There, so, so what that is, there's a kingdom law. Okay, now watch this, you guys. What does the Bible say? Does it say, my God shall supply all your what? Your, your, needs. Oh, oh, your needs. So there's, it's called the law of need. Okay, so you, who creates the need? Does God create the need or do you? No, you do. You do. You create the need. <laughs> So God doesn't supply unless you create the space for him to supply it. It's like the law of use. The law of use is if you have something, you don't use it, but you want something more, it's not going to come because you haven't used what you got. Yeah, right. it's, yeah. it's big. I, I want to share this. I, uh, this is a, a real story. It just happened to me uh, a couple of days ago. Well, it's been happening for a little bit because I've been thinking about it. So... Uh, and some of you may understand this, some of you may not. But anyways, I'm I'm, install, I'm putting on my truck. I have a diesel truck. I'm putting a new uh, upgraded transmission pan on, okay? Heavy duty, whatever, okay? And I need to put 
refill the whole transmission pan up. And because it's a diesel with a certain type of transmission, I need, I'm looking, I'm researching online, what's the, what's a good transmission fluid? Well, I found out the transmission fluid was a mobile transmission fluid. And I was like, that's the one I wanted in my heart. I was like, in my, I'm like, that's the one I want. But I kept on going over and over and saying, well, I'm, I'm all over the place here. I'm like, well, should I just get the, the OEM or the General Motors uh, transmission fluid? And I need a lot of transmission fluid. I need like $160 worth of transmission fluid, okay? But the point is, I wanted it, I wanted the mobile. But I delayed my decision making. And at the end of the day, I bought the mobile. But you know what, I just wait, I sat there and I'm like, do you know how much energy in time in space you wasted Robert by just vacillating that's a mama dixie word vacillating going back and forth again what was it it wasn't that i had no decision making or it was i delayed my i knew what i wanted just do it heck nike figure that out just do it i'm going to start a business start the business well i don't have the money <laughs> You'll never start the business if you're waiting for all the conditions to be right. Some of you have books inside you. Well, I'm waiting for everything to be right. Uh oh, that one kind of hit me. But anyways, I'm, I'm waiting for everything to be right. I'm ready, waiting for everything. You know, that, that is, that is, that is self-sabotage type of thinking. Okay. I'll, I'll write the book when my, when my desk is completely cleaned and everything's in order or I filed everything. What type of thinking is that? So again, it's an undisciplined thinking.